Hi, my friends. Welcome to EFCLA Children Congregations. Let us come together in worship and praise. Boys and girls, and welcome to another Sunday message. I hope that uh, this week has been good for you, and everybody is staying healthy. Uh, today, I will be talking about the covenant, and I am going to share my screen now. And the passage is taken from Exodus chapter twenty-four, uh, and the message is again entitled "The Covenant." And before I go on further, let's uh, ask the question, what is a covenant? A covenant is basically an agreement. Okay? It's an agreement between two parties. And a good example of a covenant is uh, when you want to rent an apartment. 
and uh, you go to the apartment manager and you say, I want to rent this apartment uh, for a year and in return, I'll pay the rent. Uh, and so the manager uh, is getting the rent from you and you in turn get the apartment. And so you enter into agreement for the rental. Of course, you go ahead and you sign what's called a lease agreement. And then both parties sign it. And then both the manager uh, or the landowner and you are required to follow what's written on the agreement. And uh, as long as you get to pay the rent, uh, the manager or the landowner is required to give you the apartment for you to live in. Uh, so that's an agreement that happens every day. Another agreement that happens every day is if your dad or mom works for a company uh, or own a business that actually uh, does business uh, with other countries, for example, and uh, they, for example, order a big shipment of goods to come into the country so that you can sell those goods here, uh, they usually have to work out an agreement with the company that is elsewhere. For example, if your company does uh, business with a company in China, then you will sign an agreement where uh, they agree uh, to send whatever goods that they're selling over a huge amount of cargo, uh, maybe of bikes, for example, and they ship it over by air or by ship. And then you in turn, you have, you have to pay the money for the shipment, you pay the money for the goods, and you have to enter into an agreement. So agreements happen every single day. And a covenant is pretty much like an agreement. So after knowing that, let's get into uh, our story for today. Um, if you'll remember that the Israelites uh, were able to escape Pharaoh and leave Egypt. After leaving Egypt, uh, they enter into the wilderness, basically a desert area, and they uh, were heading towards the promised land. But before they got to the promised land, of course, uh, it's a long journey. So they have to uh, pitch tents uh, at night to uh, stay in the same place uh, for a couple of days to rest up before they keep on traveling. And this happens over and over again. And so uh, there was this period of time when they arrived in a desert area called Sinai. And they pitched their tents at the foot of a mountain, which they call Mount Sinai. One day, as they were there, God spoke to Moses and told him to bring the people near the mountain where God will appear to the people. And there is where God also wants to make a covenant with them. That is, he wants to make an agreement with them. And of course, let's study what the covenant is all about, because we need to know what it, God wants to agree with the Israelites about. And the agreement is this. If the Israelites obey God's commandments, then God will do the following. Out of all the nations, he will regard the Israelites or the nation of Israel as his treasured possession. He will consider them very precious to him. If you consider something precious to you, you will do everything to protect it. So that's a good thing that God is offering the Israelites. Number two, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Basically. Uh, God will consider them to be his worshipers and will set them apart from the rest of the nation and treat them spe uh, specially, especially nice, especially good, basically give them, them preferential treatment. Okay, So uh, these are the promises that God has given Israel if Israel choose to obey God's commandments. Now, what are some of these commandments that God was telling Moses about? And, uh, of course, when we think about commandments, we think about the Ten Commandments. Uh, 
And so God did tell Moses about these Ten Commandments before he actually made the stones for Moses to give to the Israelites. He actually told him verbally. And then some of these uh, commandments, including do not worship any other gods. You need to be nice to your father and mother. Don't murder. Don't steal. Don't lie. You need to keep the Sabbath. Uh, don't uh, take God's name in vain. Don't, you know, be greedy and want your neighbor's stuff when they don't belong to you. And then there are other kinds of laws uh, that are in the commandments, like don't spread false reports. Do not help a guilty person by being a malicious witness. Uh, do not uh, be mean to a foreigner because you yourself know how it is to be a foreigner. Okay. Do not accept a bribe. Don't deny justice to your poor people in their lawsuits. So basically, there's a lot of laws that God was telling Moses about that Moses need to tell the Israelites about and see if they're willing to accept them and to obey them. Right? So Moses told the people to gather around the mountain where the Lord will appear and speak to them. This is going to be a big event because I don't think in history back then that the God of Israel has ever appeared to them all at once, collectively. Okay? And sure enough, when they gather around the mountains, something majestic, something even scary happened. Because on the top of the mountains, fire appeared. And there was thunder and there was lightning and there was smoke that came from the fire. And the earth even trembled. And all the people of Israel were pretty much in awe, and they were a bit scared too, because who wouldn't be scared when God appeared like that? Okay, and while all of this was happening, God told Moses what laws he was to give the Israelites, and this is when we uh, start reading the passage for today, Exodus chapter twenty-four, verse three. When Moses went and told the people all the Lord's words and laws, okay, this is after, the, uh, after God had showed up with fire and thunder and told Moses about the law. And uh, Moses then went and told the people uh, what the Lord had said. The people responded with one voice. Everything the Lord had said we will do. Okay, this is verse 3. That means... Uh, the people are agreeing to obey God's commandment. They are agreeing to enter into this covenant. Verse 4, Moses then wrote down everything the Lord had said. He built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up 12 stone pillars representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he sent young Israelite men, and they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed young bulls as fellowship offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in bowls, and the other half he splashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it to the people, and they responded, We will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. Moses then took the blood, sprinkled it on the people, and said, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. And Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel went up and saw the God of Israel, and there they ate and drank. So what happened in this passage? What happened in this passage? Um, and really what happened is that when the people of the uh, Israelites said yes to the agreement that God has offered them, they went through a very serious ceremony. Right? And you know ceremonies, right? We've been to ceremonies before. For example, a wedding ceremony uh, where a man and a woman get together in front of a priest or a pastor and they say their vows and they uh, agree to be husband and wife and to take care of each other in sickness and in health till death do them apart. And uh, they make this vow and they agree to enter into a marriage. And they do this in a ceremony in front of everybody, okay? 
and so that's a wedding ceremony. There's also an inauguration ceremony. For example, a president, uh, a new president who wants to be uh, the president of the country, he has to go through this inaugurable in, uh, inauguration ceremony where he raises his, hand, his hands and he takes an oath to uh, be a good president and to uh, protect and support the constitution of the United States. And so that's what's happening in this picture of uh, one of our presidents uh, years ago uh, and uh, he was taking his oath and he swore to uphold the constitution. And basically upholding the constitution is to uphold the protection of rights of the people of the United States. So ceremonies are very important for uh, um, to make an agreement come alive and to make an agreement become more memorable and to make the agreement more serious so that people will remember it, okay? Uh, agreement could be a simple handshake where two businessmen decide to do business together and they shake on it. That's a very, very simple and informal ceremony, but it happens also every single day. So what kind of ceremony did Moses and the people of Israel uh, go through to uh, enter into this covenant? Um, there's an altar, right? There's an altar that he set up according to this passage and sacrifices were made, sacrifices of animals. And then the blood were put in bowls and Moses even sprinkled the blood on the people of Israel. And then he read the covenant to the people of Israel and they said, yes, we will follow it. And with this ceremony, uh, this agreement became complete. Then what happened was the leaders then went up the mountains, and they met God. And there they, in, they ate and they drank. This is a very amazing event. Because as you all know, God is holy and God uh, is um, very, very powerful. And uh, when people who were sinners come before God, it's a big thing because um, you have unholy people coming before a holy God. And most of the time, uh, what happens is that these unholy people or these sinful people die. But God allowed these leaders of Israel to come before him and to actually meet him and talk to him and actually ate in his presence. So, this was an amazing event that happened. Okay? And this is sort of like after a wedding ceremony, there's a banquet and they get to enjoy um, the happening of that agreement, okay? to celebrate the agreement of marriage. And also, if you remember, Jesus during the Last Supper actually broke bread, okay? And he actually uh, lifted the cup of uh, the wine and said, this is the blood of my covenant. He's offering this covenant uh, to those who would accept him. Okay, so this is uh, another ceremony that we will be talking about later on. Okay, so it's almost like after an agreement, you want to uh, make it more serious and make it more memorable, memorable with, with a ceremony. And along with the ceremony, there's a celebration. So let's talk about the blood covenant that is happening today. The covenant that happened in Mount Sinai was in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, there's a new covenant that came through the blood that Jesus Christ shed for us on the cross. Just like the Israelites have entered into this covenant with God, we also entered into a relationship with our Lord Jesus and with God. We accepted his blood sacrifice for us. And because of this, we become children of God and receive eternal life. That is the blood covenant that is governing us today. The Bible tells us that Jesus has already offered himself for our sins. And all we have to do is to accept what he did for us in return. So there are three questions I wanted to ask all of you. You guys can think about this when you go home. If you haven't already... Are you willing to enter into this covenant with God? Where Jesus is offering himself, his blood, so that you can be saved from sin and you receive eternal life and become children of God. All you have to do is to accept Jesus. 
Okay, are you, if you haven't already, are you willing to enter into this covenant with God? Number one, number two, if you have already done so, do you still remember when it was that you have accepted the Lord and you have entered into this covenant? Hope you guys can think about this for those who are already Christians. And number three, are you willing to go through the ceremony of confirming this relationship with Jesus through baptism? If you remember, our church holds baptisms regularly. And basically, the baptism is a ceremony to celebrate the faith that we have put in Jesus Christ. Basically, it's the same thing as what Moses, that the people of Israelites do uh, when they accepted the covenant. When they actually set up the altar, they read the law, and they sprinkled blood, all of that stuff to make this more serious and more memorable. Are you willing, if you haven't already, to confirm your covenant with God and to confirm this relationship with Jesus through baptism? These are the questions I want you all to think about. And if you're already baptized, great. Congratulations. Keep remembering about how amazing and how wonderful uh, the salvation is for you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love toward us and for inviting us to enter into a covenant with you where we simply accept Jesus as Lord and we get to be your children. May you help us every day to remember this wonderful gift you have given us. And may you continue to help us walk in your ways every day of our lives. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so that is the message for uh, this Sunday. I hope you learned something from it. And I hope that the uh, message uh, can become a blessing to you. And I hope that you all have a blessed rest of the week.